Hey everyone, Tina the Noah Barfield here, and welcome to Raptors Corner. Oh no, 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 Rivalry is almost over. Whatever will I do? Well, like countless others, you can throw yourself into the holiday season, or you can watch this brand new Raptors Corner video. So pretty recently in Raptors Corner, I talked all about writing conflict, and I've covered the internal aspect of conflict pretty extensively. You know, with all that emotional angst and strife and depression, yeah, all that fun stuff. But today in Raptors Corner, it's all about the external aspect of conflict. That's right, today it's all about riding the fight scenes. That's right, all the stabby stabby shoot shoot wah pa or not that exactly, but roughly along those lines. And I know it may not seem like I know what I'm talking about, especially with all of the wah pa but I'm actually pretty qualified to talk about fight scenes and all the things contained therein, especially considering my history with fencing, archery, and shooting, as well as my background and knowledge in various different martial arts like Taekwondo, Apkido, Aikido, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, and Krav Maga. Plus, I have two brothers that I've been wrestling with for my entire life, which counts for a lot. And as much as I enjoy a good romance scene, or extraterrestrial threats, psychological manipulation, or the majesty of magic, I just love the just pointy things and the bullets and the explosions. Alright, well getting away from all of that, the first thing I want to talk about in relation to fight scenes is what is the purpose of a fight scene? Well, it may seem like, whoa, this is way too obvious, but it's to spice things up. And you may be thinking, no, it can't be that, it has to be something deeper. No, that's it. That, however, is only the primary purpose of a fight scene. Commonly, there is a secondary purpose, an underlying goal that the writer wants to achieve with this fight scene. So what's the secondary purpose for the fight scene? Whatever you want it to be. Some pretty common ones are showing some internal conflict through the external in your character, showcasing some common problems and the biases contained therein, showcasing extremes between one or more parties. All of these are valid things that are pretty common for fight scenes. Personally, for me, I like to showcase the internal conflict my character is going through, as well as how this violent expression shows a bit of their true personality, as well as the adrenaline and true thoughts that actually come out in a person's head, because they're very much their real selves whenever they're punching someone really hard in the face, but the day will probably eventually come whenever your character has to use their fist and not their mouth. So here are five tips for writing a great fight scene, even if you've never thrown a punch in your whole life. So my first tip, do your research. Oh my god, this is such an important tip and so many people got <laughs> Okay, sorry about that, it, but research is really important to do, especially with something that you don't have a lot of knowledge about. And even if you do have a lot of knowledge, it's especially important to research fight scenes. Most people don't have a lot of experience with fighting, which is a great thing. So they base it off of movies or video games or maybe even TV shows or great school fights. This is not always going to be accurate. So whenever you're doing research, look up professionals doing their thing. Observe a class, maybe even take a class yourself. If you're going to be drawing completely off of movies, movies that put a lot of time into the flow and coherence of action are recommended. Not these big blockbuster explosion ones, ones like John Wick, where they put coherence and thought and flow into every single action. Which brings me to my second point, have a coherent flow. Whenever I read books, I play it out like a movie in my head, which is great. It's phenomenal up until I get to the fight scene and then it just doesn't work. Mostly because people don't have coherence with their fighting. It's all jumbled, it's chaotic. Make sure you structure that, but make sure that it flows well. That whenever you read it, you don't get confused. Like, wait, wait, was his arm over here? Or was it under here? Was she kicking him here or up there? Where is she right now? Why is she still in the sky? I thought she was on the ground. What's going on here? There's a lot of different things that can be confusing in fight scenes, and your job as the writer is to make sure that it's as unconfusing as possible for the reader to step into the flow and your mindset. My third tip, don't overburden with lots of details. Admittedly, this is something that I need to work on and is pretty prevalent in Legend Land. Some of my characters are really methodical, so I dive deep into their personality and a little deeper than probably some of my readers want. A lot of their fighting is similar and it's very, very boring and dry because of the step-by-step -step procedures that go through it. Of course, it allows you to picture it easily, but it doesn't really come across as snappy and fast. And what's the primary purpose of action? To spice things up a little. Whenever you have a fight scene, you want to make it interesting, not methodical. However, some people are going to appreciate this. But that brings me to my fourth step, where you can make almost any methodical step-by-step -step fight scene interesting, as long as you spice it up a little. Meaning, use proper adjectives and descriptors. And that's tip number four. 
I believe I've talked about this before, where instead of saying, I blocked like this, and then I punched like that, and I moved my sword around like this, instead of doing that, I'd be like, a flurry of attacks brought my opponent to their knees. It's a lot more eye-catching, and you can get a lot of things done a lot quicker. Of course, it's important to set up a fighting style and mentality of your character beforehand, so that way your reader can easily picture it. So you might need to do a few fight scenes where you do it a little more step-by-step, -step, where you do it a little more laid out and in detail, so that way whenever you use these spicy adjectives and descriptors, your readers can picture exactly what this character would be doing. But to help keep this challenging aspect to a minimum, here's tip number five. Know your scale and context. There is no point in using lots of minute details in a large-scale battle. There is no point in using large, vague terms that you would use for sweeping motions of armies and brigades in a small one-on-one -on -one alleyway fight. If it's a dark alleyway, then you need to focus on the dirt, the grit, the grime, how intense it is, how personal and intimate this one encounter is. You need to know the scale and context of your fight scene beforehand and of the action so you can plan it appropriately. Now here is the part where I blatantly brag about my book. My novel, Legendland, this fantastic piece of literature right here, is available on a plethora of places. You can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Smashwords, iTunes, my publisher's website, and my own store, www.arc-storm.com. If you order it off of ArcStorm, then I will personally sign it for you. Oh, and hey, you want to get in contact with me? ArcStorm also works because there's a contact form on there. Or you can leave a comment below. If you want to follow me on Facebook or Twitter, I fully support that. What I fully support even more? Subscribing! I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you continue to enjoy.